the chemicals in vaccines of phenol and formaldehyde. It begins with coal. They've discovered two branches producing phenol and formaldehyde and their derivatives. So it began with the coal tar, which is creosote inside a chimney. And from that, they created the first synthetic compound. This was in 1934. And they called it phenol. Sometimes they called it Triton X in the um, vaccines, but you'll see the word phenol within a larger chemical compound. A succinate is a derivative. It's a resin that gets turned into a polyester. They use this to, what it does is it denatures protein and that it would explode the cells then. So here's a bacteria. Its proteins that make up its membranes are pulled apart. They're, they're separated, they're discombobulated, they're denatured. And this would open up the membrane, spilling out the insides, including the DNA, which you'll see written as included in the ingredients of vaccines. Um, so what does this do? One, this will kill bacteria outright because it explodes cells because it's denaturing their proteins. And two, it will explode the host cells to free the virus. It does not have an effect on virus. So um, um, polio and flu in particular are, are both grown in animal cells. And so here's some polio inside some um, monkey kidney cells and they've denatured its membrane, it's blown itself apart and freed up the virus. On the other hand, there is a different technique used for Hep B and HPV, the human papilloma virus. Those are genetically engineered inside of certain strains, such as this is yeast. It is expressing on its surface Hep B antigen proteins. Same thing with the caterpillar ovary cell lines that they're using for HPV. It is expressing on its surface. So they're using a different, uh, the, you know, proteins of the antigenic proteins of HPV. So they're using a different technique for those than for um, the flu and the polio, which is the, the traditional way of doing it. Um, this is such a toxic substance that Hitler discovered that a mere 10 cc's, the LD, lethal dose, for a man about 150 pounds would be 10 cc's, a tenth of that, one cc would be enough to kill an infant, and 0 0.5, half of that is the standard dose inside an injection given to children as it is. So you can see how small these amounts are and how powerful they are. Now what it does is it destroys the neuron pathways, completely disrupts them, and um, it, it kills very quickly. So on the other arm of production, they've discovered synthesis gas, syngas for short, and the synthesized gas was turned into methanol, which can become either a fuel or formaldehyde, and its derivative beta propiolactone. What does this do? It does the opposite of blowing up cells. Instead, it cross-links proteins to cross-link, which is why it's perfect for cadavers. Here are the proteins of a membrane of a cell, and instead of breaking them apart, it's going to connect them. It's going to cross-link them up which again causes, you know, causes a dysfunction. And for a cadaver, this would prevent it from degrading, the proteins from degrading. So it's perfect for that kind of thing. But they discovered body heat will dissipate the formaldehyde over time. And so it would be useful as a time release mechanism in future vaccines. What else does formaldehyde do? Well, um, it in um, I'll be doing a chapter on Madis Madsen's work in 1931. Back in the old days, doctors, when they injected uh, their patients with a substance, they actually watched them for a while sometimes and took notes on their reactions. Whereas today, they send them in the car and they send them off very quickly, and the reactions then are ignored um, that the parents see. So, how does formaldehyde work? Number one, it kills these bacteria, 
by here's the bacteria, the flagella sticking out, and cross-linking its proteins so that they cannot function will kill bacteria. They need their membranes functioning very well. On the other hand, viruses, um, they are crippled. Uh, it, granted, some have membranes around them, like the flu, it's popping out of its host cell membrane and it's taking when here's a membrane and when the flu virus is popping out it's going to take some of that membrane with it it's going to wrap around it that host membrane that can easily be destroyed by uh, the cross-linking its proteins but the capsid that surrounds the genetic material of the virus it will only be randomly cross-linked and it can still function and uh, as a matter of fact it can enter the cell, it can dump its DNA, um, it does not make copies of itself. I'm going to put never copies with a question mark because these are the movers of evolution. But I must say for some viruses, dumping its DNA into a cell is all it needed to do. Anyways, it has achieved its goal even if it cannot reproduce for some cells. This is interesting anyways and this creates uh, more for the chapter on the dead or alive because I yes these are inactivated bacteria inactivated viruses um, but for simplification I say they're dead because they have genetic material they are very much alive um, and actually inactivation is not apparently a completely correct term for um, all of these viruses but for now we'll say they are completely inactivated um, and they're used for hep B, they're used for polio. Um, flu uses beta propiolactone, all the flu shots do, except for, of course, the live ones, which do not use chemicals. Uh, what did they discover? They discovered that in 1909, they discovered if you combine phenol and the formaldehyde together, you got the first plastic, which is called Bakelite. Very interesting. These chemicals do not belong in the body. That is why they are in my graph. I have the vaccine tic-tac-toe with the three main categories of microbes that they're using and I have a category for the chemicals and they are listed there including mercury and including aluminum because they do not belong in the body. Mercury is, does come out into the environment. Our bodies are used to handling it. It is very, uh, you know, not good for us at all to any degree, but aluminum is, we're not used to handling whatsoever. That's a whole other chapter in itself too, talking about those. But they are part of the category of chemicals, of phenols and the formaldehydes, because they do not belong in the body and the consequences to see what they can possibly do must be looked at. Thank you.